Database selections aren't used as often as they used to be now with the introduction of refined edges. But what channel base selections are really good for is making selections around really fine detail such as the hair around the bride here and the groom against the background of the sky and also say trees as well uh, with their leaves and their intricate detail. So what you can do in order to actually make a selection is you can sort of walk backwards instead of starting out with the selection and, and actually refining it what we can do is start with a channel that we use in order to create a selection from now if we go to the channels panel here what you can see is that you'll have the rgb version of the actual image that we're working on but there's also the red green and blue channels that actually make up this image and you'll notice as you click through them that each one has a different contrast and a, a different set of tonal values for the uh, individual colors that are throughout the image. Now what's good about utilizing these types of channels, uh, they can save you a, a lot of time uh, in actually starting, with, uh, actually giving you the foundation and giving you a starting point that you can work towards for your selection. So in this case, what I'd want to do is I want to end up with a black and white mask in order to create my selection from. And what I'd like to have is the sky completely white and the couple and the rock wall completely black. So the best channel in order to create that is going to be the blue channel as you can see here because the sky is quite white and all the other details there are relatively dark. So what we want to do before we make any adjustments is we want to duplicate the blue channel. And this is because if you start working on these channels, you're going to basically destroy your image and we don't want that. So we're going to drag the blue channel down the bottom to the new channel icon. I'm just going to release that. So now I have a blue copy. And this is what we can start to work with in order to create our channel for our selection. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to apply image. Now apply image will allow me to essentially um, choose a source file, a layer and a channel from which then I can actually apply a blending mode to. And in this case I'm going to apply the multiply blending mode and if you remember from previous videos that the multiply will make all of the darker areas in the photograph darker and all of the lighter areas lighter. Uh, so that's a, a really sort of brief explanation of how that works but if you want more information about blending modes just go back to uh, previous mod modules and actually look at the blending mode video. But as you can see when I turn on preview you'll notice that the uh, mid-tone areas start to get darker and also the highlights which are the sky they start to get a little bit lighter so I'm going to just go and click OK for that. I might just revisit apply image and apply it for a second time which I think that's going to be a good idea so we'll click OK again. So now we have something to work with. So what I'd like to do first before I do anything else is I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to adjustments and go to levels. I'm going to grab the highlights and the reason I'm going to grab the highlights is I want to, the highlights are the sky. So by grabbing the highlights and bringing them in and actually blowing them out, I'm actually removing the veil, as you can see on the left here, by increasing the highlights, it's actually um, blowing out the veil, which I don't actually want uh, selected in my uh, mask. And we can choose to refine that later on if we find that the veil um, gets affected by the um, the adjustments that we make to the vibrance and density of the sky later on. So I'll leave that set to about 178 as the level setting and we'll just click OK. Now what I want to do is I want to quickly uh, isolate these areas, make them completely black and make the rest of the sky completely white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the magnetic lasso tool I'm just going to start from the base here. I'm just going to quickly run along this rock face, just along here, and just along the outside uh, 
edges of the actual uh, flowers really quickly. And as you can see, the magnetic lasso tool has really um, is really picking up those edges quite easily, and it's not having any trouble. So I'm going to stop about there. I'm just going to run it straight up here and around the couple down this side, and we'll just pick up again just on this rock face, and we'll just go to the corner, and then we'll run it straight up the up the top here and then straight across the top here and then down to where I started originally. Oops, just select that one again. So now I have a really um, a really rough selection of the sky but what it's going to enable me to do is to select the paint bucket tool, um, make sure I've set on white uh, for the foreground color there and then I'm just uh, make sure that the actual the actual tolerance is relatively high, about 200, and I'm going to basically click on the mask. So now the mask, uh, sorry, <laughs> click on the selection. So now the selection has gone completely white. What I want to do with the brush tool is just touch up a couple of those edges that I uh, didn't quite get there with the magnetic tool, magnetic lasso tool, just to make them, uh, just to refine them a little bit and fine tune them. Like so, that looks relatively pretty good. So now that I've done that, what I want to do is completely inverse uh, create a selection based on the actual white in the sky. So I just now obviously this uh, tolerance of the magic wand tool that I'm going to be using is too high, so I'm going to drop that back to 32. Remake selection again. So now what I can do is inverse that selection so that the couple and the rock wall are selected and then we can go ahead and actually start to color in some of those areas using the brush tool and set that brush tool to black. So I'm just going to darken off some of these areas here so that we don't get any of that detail. Now where the groom is, um, he has a really nice selection or outline around him so I'm really quite pleased with that and we can just easily color in around the face and the neckline here and also to a certain degree we can go around the flowers here as well and around the arm. Now I'm going to be careful around the hair there because I don't really want to um, color in some of those areas because they are quite fine with their detail. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in quickly and we'll just take a closer look at what we're actually working with. I'm just going to roughly just color in here. Now the selection right up until about here where I'm at now was great, but there's a lot of uh, really fine hair detail there that I don't want to color in or make dark. I primarily just want to make sure that I get her face, the bride's face. So, just reduce my brush size a little bit. There we go, that's not too bad. So that's pretty good. Now, these other areas up here, we could probably um, play around with them. Uh, I might just make sure. Let's just have a look at the image again. Yes, I might just make, whoops. Turn that off. I'm just going to color in where she's got a little um, tiara there. Just a little bit. But I'm going to leave most of the um, lighter gray areas at the top there because I don't want it to be too defined. And then from there, we can just zoom out again. We have a relatively uh, good mask that we can start to actually make a selection on. Now what you want to do, if you want to load up this as a new selection, uh, what you can do is grab the actual, uh, grab the blue channel and drag it to the load, um, load selection icon down the bottom here. So, so that'll actually 
show you the selection although it didn't actually highlight what it's called it I'll just hover over that it is the, the load channel as a selection um, and then we can just basically turn on this layer and you'll notice it looks like a quick mask at the moment um, primarily because I've got this uh, additional channel turned on so we can turn that off but that gives you an indication of how well we've actually made how uh, how good a job we've done of making the actual mask and what we can do from there select the RGB again go to layers and then we can actually start to um, apply a layer so in this case I might go and actually choose to apply a hue and saturation layer okay we might just increase the saturation there in the sky just to really emphasize it and maybe perhaps we'll just load that selection again and maybe go in and actually create a um, maybe use curves to just add a bit of density to the sky just to really emphasize what we've done there so as you can see it's uh, using channel based selections can be quite useful uh, when it comes to actually uh, fine detail in your images um, but as I say you also have the option of using refine edge which has made things a little bit easier um, but if you look here just around at hundred percent at just the fine detail in the hair we've done a really amazing job of actually um, isolating that uh, each of those hair um, follicles and making sure they've been included in the actual selection uh, that we've created now obviously there's a bit of blue tinging there and that's primarily because of the hue and saturation I've gone overboard with that um, just to emphasize some of the things that we can do but that just shows you that using channels to create selections is extremely useful now once you've actually created a channel it is saved uh, it is saved and you can reuse that as often as you like for a variety of different reasons so that's one way of actually saving a selection now you'll also notice if you just go ahead and actually create a selection so for example if I just roughly got say the lasso tool and we just did a really rough selection around this couple what you'll notice is when you right click on the selection you have a range of different options now the first one that you'll see uh, with regards to saving your selection is save selection so if we click on that you then have the options uh, the option to actually choose a destination now this is where you can choose the document that you're actually going to save your selection to and in this case I'm going to use the current file I have open but you could also open a new document if you wanted to you can then specify the channel and in this case I could apply it to the same channel that I'm currently uh, that I just created the blue copy or I can create a new one so I'm gonna leave it on new you can then name it so rough um, selection and then you have uh, the operation uh, settings here now in this particular case it's going to be set to new channel because I've only got one selection there at the moment but if I had another selection I could actually essentially add a new selection to that channel or subtract it or even intersect with an existing channel so once I click OK and we jump back to the channels uh, the channels panel what you'll see now is I have a rough selection um, black and white mask there so that's primarily how you go about using channels to not only uh, create a new selection from but also to save your selections for future use.